A new study has just come out saying younger Asian Americans experience more discrimination but are less likely to seek help. What's going on? Are they just being soft or are they just aware? Yeah, we got to talk about it because this says younger Asian Americans report more bias but seek less help. That means they're finding ways to cope on their own. The article then goes on to talk about microaggressions saying that the generation that came up during COVID-19 is a lot more aware of microaggressions whereas the older generation may not see a microaggression as an act of anti-Asian hate. So basically, different generations, Andrew, have different definitions of what even constitutes as racism. Yeah, I mean, I think right now we can all just agree that in today's age, a lot more people are more aware and more specific about microaggressions or whether that's racist remarks or mean things that are said or reading between the lines or tone tonage things when people are talking. So I think People are much more aware nowadays. That's fair to say. Right. And I do think that Asians, probably more than any other group in America, are. So, and by the way, I'm not saying other groups don't get discriminated against. I'm saying that Asians probably get the most microaggressions out of everybody. Mm. I, that's what I would say, honestly. That's, I'm, that, I'm adding that in there. The article didn't say that. Um, then it goes on to say that what are included in microaggressions is that everyday life, is that online. And uh, basically, it all comes down to training, right? And there was a ton of different arguments, Andrew, and discussions that came up from this article being posted, Andrew, even disagreements from within Asian Americans themselves, generation to generation. Oh, man, maybe we'll discuss all those different viewpoints and some possible solutions that people should do. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we delve into this. First comment is basically saying, Yes, they do get microaggressions against the younger Asians, but I saw the elders get it way worse, but they felt like they just had to take it. Yeah, I think the older generation, I think we could be fair, they just endure stuff like differently, man. It was just like eat bitterness, eat vin just like endure. Like if America, if American people were not nice to you, you just took it and you just said, well, that's just, you know, people in America. That's how a foreigner is treated and I'm a foreigner. But obviously when you're an Asian American born and raised, there is some and it's fair to feel some entitlement to being treated like other people i remember when i was in elementary school and somewhat some parts of junior high if you called an asian a c-h-i-n-k you would not really get in trouble right at yeah. a time literally america thought it was okay to say that nowadays obviously the kid probably would get in trouble if they called Dude. an asian like literally you could get called a gook or a chink in your own teachers would be like, stop that, but like not treat it with any seriousness. Yeah, I, I had coaches and teachers whom I would not consider were bad people, but they did make some slick Asian jokes here and there when I was one of the few Asian kids at my particular class or school. And nowadays, that would definitely not fly. Like that, that teacher would like get in trouble. I don't know if they'd get fired, but they would definitely get in trouble for those jokes and remarks. But back then it was kind of like, ha ha, uh, uh, okay. But doesn't it go to show you that every era, every like phase of culture in history, every plot chart on the timeline has a different Overton window. Yes. The Overton window has shifted a lot. So I don't know if this guy was saying, oh, these young kids, they're just dealing with a shifted Overton window or was he just just pointing out that the older generations had it more harsh, but they weren't even able to take it harsh. Right, and there's, of course, to close out this point, there's the argument of like, hey, just because it was that way and people accepted it that way, does it mean it should stay that way and everybody should just toughen up? Or should you try to change the culture and punish people people uh for those microaggression remarks right and you know that's the discussion moving forward i guess where i stand on that is i don't think you can go retroactively and go back into culture to a mm -hmm. different timeline but you could judge people off the current timeline point number two this is discussion number two andrew this guy said maybe because the older generation told us to keep our head down be quiet and work hard instead of fighting for yourself i blame it on bad coaching unbalanced coaching from the elders yeah no i mean i definitely think that uh, it's not fully their fault, but not all immigrant parents are uh, were able to teach their and coach their kids in uh, in a holistic manner. Because not all immigrant parents know everything about America. So they were just teaching them what they knew. And some parents were still better than others at doing it. So yeah, to be honest, it wasn't balanced coaching for the most part. Yeah, I would say the majority of people that are Asian American from the older generation, if they could go back and get better balanced America coaching from their parents or from some sort of outside source, they would hit that button. Mm -hmm. But you can't control life. Life is life, right? Like life happened to you. Your upbringing happened to you. All you can do is move forward from this point. Um, but yeah, for sure. I, 
I, it's like, it's tough. I don't want to like resent the older generation or your parents or your dad specifically because you know how sometimes people say, it's like, it was a fault of my dad. My dad had blind spots, but it's like, man, he just didn't know. Right. Point number three, this guy said, thank you for sharing this. Curious about this and I hope it can shift. Basically, basically people saying like, I hope this isn't this way anymore. Uh, by the way, Andrew, I think all the comments, they're like, this shouldn't be this way. I hope that it can shift in the future. I think these are all well-intentioned comments, but it's not going to change anything to say that, right? Mm, because, yeah. Andrew, if you look at every community, isn't there a lot of pros and cons and very macro statistical things? Latinos may have academic gaps. Uh, you know, the African-American community, there may be a lot of interactions with the criminal justice systems. White people have a lot of uh, drug overdose stats right now. Right. And Asians, we get picked on, we kind of get depressed, and maybe we feel like we don't have any value in America socially outside of our, our, our space as economic cogs. I guess, is saying this shouldn't be this way, what's that going to do? Uh, Yeah, it doesn't really do much to say that. I mean, I feel like... That comment is usually said by people who have felt like they've kind of left the Asian community, but they still care about it, but they're not part of it anymore. Like it so, shouldn't be this way. Yeah, so they're just like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And we're like, yeah, we know, like, let's do something about it. But, you know, I'm not really there to do anything. Like, this is not my community anymore. All right, fine. Yeah, well, I get I, it. Well, I appreciate it. I guess. Yeah, thanks for acknowledging it. Yeah, moving on. Um, you know why? It's because in terms of culture or these macro stats that are these gigantic gaps for every community and every community has pros and cons, there's about seven to 10 factors at play that create anything like that. Somebody said, listen, guys, you got to nip it in the butt or nobody else will be, nothing will get addressed. You got to like stop these trees before they bloom. You got to attack it early. And then somebody else said, oh my gosh, seems like nothing has changed over the past century. We're still living in an episode of Warrior. You know, in Warrior, the Asians oh, are all getting picked man. on until the... the Man, comes. hey, let me know in the comments down below. Has a lot changed since the scenes of Warrior that take place in what, 1910, 19, whatever? About 100 18, something 18, years ago, 100, right? yeah. Um, this guy, point number four, a lot of people are saying, well, this study was in California and New York. Well, are the, all these Asians want to live? Why don't Asians just get out of California and New York? Indicating that these are the areas where they feel pressed on. Well, I also think these are the areas where people are hyper aware, to be honest. I think that in states of like, to be honest, like when I talk to Asians from the Midwest or like, you know, very non-Asian states like a Wyoming, a Oklahoma, those Asians actually take the microaggressions. Like, I'm not saying that people out there are super racist necessarily. I mean, I think Asians live fine lives out there as well. But the Asians who are out there, they're just like, yeah, I go through that, and I just chalk it up to, like, ignorance, You would say they've accepted a different baseline of treatment yes. or just how their interactions are going to go. Yes. And also the density of so things is a lot less, too. California and New York, obviously the most critical states, the most hyper-aware states, uh, very woke places, you know, where we're all, like, thinking about race and microaggressions right. and all that very constantly. So, yes, I, I think in these states particularly – it would track. And of course, subsequently after this commentator, there was a bunch of arguing, oh, what? You think I want to live in the Midwest? The Midwest is trash. Oh yeah, I live in Atlanta. I don't get anything, blah, blah, blah. You know, back and forth. Well, uh, here's the truth, guys. A lot of people's experiences are individualized to them as a person. But then of course, there's macro stats too, where it's like the bulk distribution of people. Your own individual life can be different from the mainstream archetype happening um this girl is young she said when young people do speak out it doesn't seem like anybody believes us or cares nobody takes young people seriousness with any seriousness and then somebody said yeah this from the older generation he said that's because we don't victimize ourselves especially the older asians we just work hard and that's all mm. so basically you see what competing mentalities andrew maybe somebody saying dude don't be a victim don't victimize yourself and the other person's like but i'm just saying what's happening to me and nobody's taking it serious yeah, I think that some people, like, you can say what's happening to you, but I think people want to see some self-agency, too. And I think that's maybe where there's some generational, sh uh, you know, separation. Right. I mean, I will say this. I noticed there are some comments from guys in the older generation that are like, I just put my head down and work through it. That's why Asians have the highest median recorded income in America. Blah, 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 blah. That's why we rise up. And it's like, dude, there's pros and cons to every plan. But put your like head down, ignore the microaggressions and all the disrespect and get to the money. 
that's a real plan. And obviously on a macro statistical basis, it's worked, but obviously the kids are more concerned with like the social aspects because they're not at the income earning part of their life mm. yet. They're like dealing with the ramifications of being, I guess, a uh, like you said, the little bro disrespected race in America on all sides, to be honest. Point number seven, this guy said, take, uh, make sure you follow an eye for an eye. Don't be a victim. Fight, 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 fight. These are the guys that are encouraging Andrew. What? Taking MMA, getting yeah. a uh, concealed carry mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think you should physically fight in every scenario, but I do think that there is like verbally fighting. I think verbally either de-escalation or verbal combat, I will call it. I'll just call it verbal combat. Verbal street combat. I'm not talking about physical street combat. I'm saying for a lot of microaggressions, they're usually not physical. Are you talking about the fight before the fight? Yeah, I'm talking about like the word exchange and the awareness and stuff like that. And I think that is something that a lot of Asians have to like train for. And you have to like almost drill for it. Like you almost have to take a class where you practice speaking back to people. You have to understand a lot of Asians like, they're not practiced in this. Well, our culture is not very combative or uh, conflict oriented either internally. Yeah, even so it's not in like language. We're not going to get the coaching like amongst the Asians yeah. from it. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I wish that Asian parents would like still send your kid to SAT prep class, but send your kid to a, a Krav Maga or a, a verbal de-escalation or like you said, early situational awareness, making the reads class. I don't know. Are those, I'm sure some of those classes got to be available in some of the cities, right? Like if I was going to design a self-defense course for Asians specifically, like, you know, like targeted Asians specifically or Asians who feel like they're always getting microaggression talked down on, mm. half of the class would be about speaking and dealing with your emotions and how to have comebacks and, and, and how to talk to people. And, and you know what else? dealing with people not moving out of your way on the sidewalk even when you have the right of way that is something i see in big cities all the time uh, even like like a rich preppy white person will not move for an asian yeah, no honest. i mean it's crazy I you got a shoulder check I, I mean i don't know if i call them microaggressions but i mean there's even just a few things that happened this week that i could point to that if i wanted to be critical i would point to those things and be like oh yeah that was because of this and this it may or may not have been, but regardless, yeah. you know, I... Well, without getting into detail, Andrew, some people were trying to punk a bunch of Asians at the pizza shop the other day, and they were... Not at the pizza shop. I'm trying to get a slice, man. Anyways. Uh, point number eight. This guy, this is his words, by the way, guys. I'm just reading the comments. Say the quiet part out loud. The racism discrimination is mostly coming from other minorities. And this turned, uh, this, this cycled into a lot of arguing within the Asian community. Listen, I'm not sure because how do you even rank this? Like, oh, well, uh, there was a hundred cases of white passing people who uh, did microaggressions against Asians in New York versus other minorities. Listen, it is coming from all sides, though, I'll say that. I don't know the percentage breakdown. I'm not going to well, get well, into it. Well, doesn't it also depend on, like, where you spend your time and what realms yeah. you, you are having your pings in? Yeah. I'll tell you this. Asians get pressed from every angle, whether it's in the boardroom of Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 companies, all the way to the streets. Yeah. But, yeah, whoever runs those realms is usually the one doing the pressing. Guys. And they, yeah, they might be different. All different races have picked on Asians. Let's just be honest. I'm just going to say it. All different races. Yeah, there's this comment. All of them. There's this comment that was very balanced. They said, listen, guys, we got to hold our local reps accountable. Neither parties are great. Dems are weak on crime against Asians, and the GOP is plain racist with their rhetoric. Yeah, both true, guys. I don't care which political side you are on. That's a knock on that. That's a knock on that. That's both real talk. Number nine, somebody said, it's time to call upon the power of all the white boyfriends. Okay, so this was a sarcastic funny. joke, right? It's funny. But theoretically, isn't it true, Andrew, that friends or whatever significant others in high places of any realm, if that tribe rules that realm, it is important. For example, most NBA players, they tend to be very pro-China because China makes up a gigantic portion of the NBA's profits. Yeah, but I feel like during COVID or during the peak of Asian hate, I feel like some people stepped up and at least said stuff. I don't know if they were marching the streets and like putting on tactical vests and, you know, uh, going out policing themselves in a militia. But I did, I mean, I can't speak. I can't, I can't say it just comes down to case by case. It's if you, if your boyfriend or girlfriend who's non-Asian feels like they, if they, you don't feel like they've done anything, then that's an issue. Right. I guess this 
sarcastic statement would have more logic to it if every Asian girl who got with a white guy required them to support the Asian community before they got with them. Mm. But yeah, there's a variance. I don't know. I've seen both happen. And then this- before we go on this date, I'm going to need you to sign this paper that says that if anything happens to Asian people in a macro news global news sense that you're going to stand up for me. Did everybody see that viral TikTok meme where the white guy broke up with the Asian girl and then he took stop Asian hate out of his bio? Yeah, that's hilarious. Somebody said, I moved to Australia from the US and I don't regret it because this basically this guy was saying in the comment section uh, when he was explaining himself, the US became too contentious and I just felt like I wanted to not think about this anymore as a I just get picked on less in Australia. Yeah, I can see that. You know, I have some Aussie friends uh, that are Asian, and it seems like although it's not like Asians run Australia, I think they still get joked on there. It seems but, like they get joked on, but I think maybe the, uh, you know, it's all case by case, man. Some people feel like there's more racism in Australia. People are more outspoken. People feel like it's more dangerous in America. I would I say this. Know. Australia got to be way less dangerous than America. Yeah, it is. Australia, Australia is got a, to be less dangerous, bro. But it just, but again, like you're like, like, oh, I moved to Amsterdam or this Asian guy moves to Amsterdam and, and then he doesn't experience any racism and then someone moves to Italy and they experience, I don't know. It's just, it's case by case. It is case by case. I, I don't like it when people just like have one experience and then they try to say that everybody's experience is going to be like theirs, guys. Ultimately, Andrew, what are your recommendations? The younger generation, they feel more discrimination. They report more, but they're seeking help less. Here's my recommendations, guys. This is going to be some goofy ideas, but I think they make some sense. Uh, just from a verbal standpoint, you got to... You got to practice roast battles. I know that sounds goofy. Wait, Andrew, why, why no, would but, roast battles? No, but Andrew, especially if you're Asian, Asian, you will get your feelings hurt because when you do roasting each other, it hurt the heart. You have to build up your muscles for combative verbal altercations. For this environment. Yeah. For and, the West. And maybe that means playing uh, vocal sports, combat sport. I mean, sorry, combat or contact sports. It doesn't have to be combat. A sport where you have to communicate with other people, that you have to argue with other people. You have to get this practice in. Like a lot of people think practicing verbal stuff is stupid, but you know when you're learning a new language, what do you do? You drill it. You practice in it. Guys, this is a new language, essentially, a new tier of English. We're talking about combative English. We're talking about dealing with microaggressions or how to deal with and mm. express yourself firmly and confidently to a work in a workplace in, setting. In a that, Western manner. In a Western manner that ga gains your respect, not only dissing people and cursing people. Because I remember when I was younger and we just learned curse words on the on the playground, we were just cursing up a storm and it didn't even make any sense. Like, if you blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, but now if you know how to use the words, it's a lot more effective. And I think that's the number one thing. I mean, number two is like, you know, train martial arts and get fit. Obviously, that's like, goes yeah. without saying. That sounds... Uh, I agree. I like team contact sports. I also like team martial arts, like group classes with sparring, especially like verbal sparring with the physical sparring with the pads or whatever, even non pads, whatever, as long as you guys don't break each other's teeth. And uh, I actually think it's really important to show kids empowering content from Asia because you might not find it in Asian America. Mm. So please suss out the empowering pieces of Asian male content, Asian female content. I know, I guess for America, Ming-Na Wen does a lot of empowering content for young Asian yeah. American females where yeah. she's like a warrior, but like speaks with her uh, verbally strong, but also physically strong and willing to stand up and fight for, advocate for herself. Right. And, and here's the thing. Listen, I think K-dramas and uh, are great on Netflix, but I think because those don't take place in America and you're not dealing with Americans and it's not... It's like, I don't know, you need like more Western role models to Asian, Western Asian role models to go off of because, and I think that's important because we live in this land. We don't live in a, in Gangnam, Korea. You know what I mean? Like we don't live in these nice or- But or, I wish, but I wish that we did. I know you wish you did. I know people wish they did. I get it. It's great for escapism. I get it. I get it. So keep watching them. But I'm just saying, you have to understand that- 
you got to learn from people in real life. And that's where coaches come into play, martial arts mm-hmm. coaches or your, you know, managers that you like at work or your big bro. And, and, and be able to relate to non-Asian content too. If you, if you go to earlier James Bond movies, Andrew, he was really smooth. If you look at the more modern James Bond movies, he's very brutish. Watch them both. John yeah. Wick, Keanu's part Asian. Yeah. At least watch John Wick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... John Woo flicks. I don't know. Get, do you just feel empowered like Asians are not just meant to be everybody's like little submissive worker bee in America. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, again, I think it comes with time and practice and knowing like, I know that microaggressions can catch you off guard and it's okay at the end of the day, as long as you come out of it safely and you can learn from it, I think that that is just also part of life. But if it keeps happening to you time at again and again and again, and you really have no response, you're like, I don't know, this happened to me 10 times and I have nothing, I didn't respond yet. I'm like, if it happened 10 times, you gotta do something. One or two, you learn from it, that's fine. Five, six, oh man, you gotta come back with something. And listen, man, if you got a little nephew or you have a little cousin that maybe has some blind spots due to their parents just being so caught up in survivalism and trying to make a, you know, have money in the bank account and stuff like that, do yourself at least try to reach out to them to try to fill in their blind spots from their possible unbalanced coaching that they received growing up. And I just think we got to study Asian culture deeper and we got to study American culture deeper. We can't just like let things happen through osmosis. I think that's the biggest issue that I'll end with is a lot of times, Andrew, people let like however Asian they got raised on accident be the extent Mm -hmm. of their Asian study or however American they ended up. It doesn't, you got to do deeper study than the other kids at school. Right. Well, you got to be deliberate about it. That's what I mean. And I mean drilling, verbal, combative English is how I'll say it. Com- verbal, uh, 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 combative verbal speech. C- CVS. CVS. Oh, CVS. Take him to CVS. Dude, listen to rap battles. And they got ones that are more like suburban and proper and Shakespearean. If you guys don't want like uh, to listen to like a Meek Mill like smack yeah. DVD or something like that. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What do you think of this study? Is it a split between generations? Is some people too sensitive or some people just more hyper aware? And how should we go about it? Because we don't want the situation to be the same for another hundred years in America. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.